All right, everyone, today on things that the mainstream media won't really talk about much, and it's actually, I was going to do a separate video on this, but I'll just put it as an aside here as a preface to this, you know, concept of Saran Saran and RFK's son saying, oh, yeah, I don't even think he fucking was guilty. Uh, I'll just say this, as long as the mainstream media continues to refuse to cover certain things uh, because it's, you know, inconvenient from them and there's no way they can really spin it, you know, attacking RFK's son, not the greatest idea since a family of fucking Kennedy families full of Democrats. Uh, as long as I keep doing that, there's less competition for the alt media. So it's actually great. So I almost hope that they keep doing that. Uh, but what RFK's son is saying, and you got to realize he's like 65 now. <laughs> he's an old man himself. Uh, it was a long time ago, it was the late 60s. He's saying that he doesn't believe that Saran Saran uh, acted alone, maybe maybe not even uh, involved. And I think he's right, and I'll tell you why. RFK was shot from behind, and Saran Saran was never behind him. Uh, so uh, it, it doesn't really make sense, the official government line. And there is an ongoing attempt to get closure on this. The thing is, I would warn, the chances of getting closure on the RFK assassination, which was almost certainly some sort of conspiracy... And I think that lends weight in turn to the concept of the JFK assassination being a conspiracy involving the government, a deep state, Soviet uh, conspiracy, or whatever it happens to be. The odds of getting closure on them, though, are very, very low, at least, at least in the next couple decades. Now, once all the boomers are dead, and nobody who was actually alive at the time, for the most part, uh, who is still not demented, uh, is around, then maybe they'll... Uh, decide to declassify. Oh yeah, it was uh, it was the co the Cubans all along killed JFK. Oh yeah, LBJ was a bad dude. He had them both killed. He had JFK killed so he could knock him out of the way. Then he killed off RFK because he felt threatened politically, which I think is a fairly uh, decent proposal. It is rather funny that there are still people who have believed the official government line despite the fact that you have two individuals from the same family have worked in the same administration killed in mysterious circumstances in front of large crowds of people and yet nobody can get their story straight. I think what happened is that Saran Saran, as, as I believe a Palestinian radical, uh, was used as a scapegoat when they realized the Secret Service detail. When they realized who was actually involved with killing RFK from behind, they probably quickly apprehended the person, realized, oh shit, this is like an LBJ staffer, or, or, oh shit, the commies struck again, they killed, the pre they killed a would-be U.S. president of Kennedy a second time, all hell's gonna break loose and people call for nuclear war if this story gets out. Here, fucking throw him in Gitmo or something, or I don't even think Gitmo was open at the time. But throw him in a cell somewhere, into a fucking dungeon, and you grab that dude over there, he looks ethnic. Here, grab him and administer a thousand doses of LSD. Saran Saran swears up and down that he, he shot RFK, but then says, well, I don't remember the event. That's a person with a scrambled mind. I think Saran Saran is either deeply mentally disturbed uh, and had some sort of problem and, and was sort of, maybe he was acting funny and so they grabbed him and assumed that it was his responsibility. Maybe he touched the, the murder weapon at some point. It's too shifty. There are too many odd details for the official story after a very summary investigation to be taken seriously. That's my opinion. I would think that if RFK's son himself is questioning the official narrative, that matters quite a bit more than some random person that you could cast aside as maybe a conspiracy theorist or a, <laughs> a career loony. Now, oh yeah, now Art Bell says RFK might have been killed by an alien. Uh, you know, obviously not going to cause a second investigation into uh, the murder. But when RFK's son goes, apparently, you know, in the dead of night, goes and has a three-hour meeting with Saran Saran after spending all of this time talking to other people that were there or, or you know, associated with RFK, is like, uh, this is a little fishy to me and I don't want an innocent man imprisoned and, you know, I don't think my dad would like that either. That's, that's more pressure than the average person can put on it. The problem is, here's the big problem, the big problem is that with the, uh, the alt media a uh, little bit distracted right now by more modern political stuff, stuff like this tends to slip through the cracks except on the weird side of YouTube. Uh, and it's not going to get touched by the lamestream media much. Like, Fox News isn't going to come out and do a half-hour interview of RFK's son. Oh, um, yeah, I believe you too, says Sean Hannity. I, I always thought it was mysterious how he died. I, I always thought that Saran dude didn't look guilty. I think that MKUltra kicked in, and it's possible. I point this out. 
Uh, before people think I'm going off into conspiracy land, because I know they typically associate this sort of rhetoric with it. MK Ultra is largely a failure, but it is possible to cause a person to have a lapse in memory if you drug them up really good. Yeah, not necessarily just with LSD, but <laughs> giving them some psychedelic cocktail. Uh, yeah, they're not going to know exactly what species they are, let alone recall anything about events because they're just going to totally blank out. Now, it'll be like a deterrent trip. Maybe they administered that. Maybe they gave them a, a bit of devil's breath. It's entirely possible. They do that in uh, the Caribbean. It's, it's common when, they, uh, when the hooker that you've picked up wants to rob you, they'll just blow some devil's breath in your face. You'll be out of it for at least a day, probably to Scopomaline. Uh, or, uh, I, I always get this one wrong exactly in the spelling of it. I think it's uh, Scopomaline uh, is the proper pronunciation. But uh, it's, it's derived from Brugmansia and some of these other plants, and it's uh, very dangerous. <laughs> it's not exactly a recreational drug. It's not one you could enjoy using. Maybe use it for some weird shamanistic services, but, you know, you probably won't remember them. That's the problem. You have to have, you go into a trance, Oracle have to have someone else, uh, you know, tell you afterwards what you did and said, and just set up a bunch of recording setups. Uh, by the way, it was, it was uh, hard to record yourself on psychedelics as I learned myself, you know, half a decade ago, or I think more than that now, like seven years ago. Uh, mainly because you often uh, lose track of time, and so you think the recording's an hour long and it's like ten seconds. Uh, you, know, you know, ask me sometime about my mushroom trip and what it meant in that context. No, uh, Saran Saran, I believe RFK's son is correct. I don't think Saran Saran was responsible. I don't think that because the official story makes no sense. It wouldn't be it wouldn't be possible for him to have administered the gunshot that actually killed him. He was shot from behind, not from the front. Saran Saran goes off, uh, gets apprehended, and I believe the story was that he was just sort of sitting there uh, in a daze or something. You know, maybe he was like, "Oh shit, I just killed who had been president." And his mind blanks out, and maybe he has bullets that were able to go behind RFK and come back like a boomerang. That makes perfect sense. More likely, Saran would have shot himself under such circumstances. Okay, he leaned in at this angle and he had the gun like that. I don't think... Here, RFK, take a selfie with me. <laughs> no, 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 that's just a gun-shaped camera. Uh, I don't think that that happened. I think oftentimes the official narrative reads more like a conspiracy theory than maybe the unofficial the narrative that you could concoct. I think it's perfectly sensible to say, hey, someone else shot him. It was part of a deep state operation of some sort. Maybe it was LBJ's people. Maybe it was insiders who felt the Kennedys might start a nuclear war. Maybe it was Soviets and they had to cover up the fact that it was Soviets so the American public wouldn't be in, in total, utter chaos. They go, shit, the commies can come over here and kill our presidents. We're all lost, and then all hell breaks loose, and people clamor for a preemptive nuclear strike. Regardless of the case, though, the official story doesn't make sense. Neither does, does the official story for, like, the Martin Luther King murder, or for JFK, or Marilyn Monroe. In fact, a whole lexicon of people around the same time. Now, it's all very mysterious, and it seems like maybe uh, there were those behind the scenes that were involved in some of these things. I think Monroe was uh, assassinated by the CIA for... Uh, fucking both JFK and RFK and thus knowing a little bit about the backstory when these things uh, began happening. I think she knew a little bit too much in the most strict sense, so they decided to uh, administer a little bit of drugs and just uh, knock her off. That's about all. Peace out.